an attorney by the name of Stephen Schwartz found himself in hot water after using ChatGPT to outsource legal research for a lawsuit. The AI bot provided instant summaries on comparable cases, including some that didn't exist at all. Schwartz had asked OpenAI's ChatGPT to help him with the research for a lawsuit. That would save him a lot of time. He was representing an airline passenger who suffered injuries after being struck by a serving cart on a 2019 flight. Unfortunately for Schwartz, the defendant's lawyers couldn't find these non-existent cases. That led to embarrassment and a $5,000 fine. I'll give you an example of what I found recently while using Llama 3. I got a text from an online friend named Bick. Now Bick is into movie trivia, and he sometimes sends me questions like this. Quote, so apparently, before moving to Chicago and losing track of his kids when going on vacation, Kevin's dad was an attorney for a crime family in Miami who faked his death. I thought he must have sent this text to the wrong person in another conversation because I was just coming back from a camping trip and I'm like, what? But he responds, this should be an easy one to figure out. You will also discover that Kramer was a bookie in Miami. You know, so if Kramer is part of the mix, I'm interested in digging deeper. While enlisting my assistant, Llama 3, was sort of helpful. The thing also led me down the primrose path a few times to the dead end of bad information. I had to fact check everything it was telling me. I asked it to... Look for an episode in The Cleveland Show where Kevin's dad was an attorney for a crime family in Miami who faked his death. And it responds, I think I can help you with that. The Cleveland Show was a spin-off of Family Guy, and it seems like you're referring to a specific episode. After some research, I found the episode you might be looking for. Who Killed Randall Fincel? Season 3, Episode 14. In this episode... Kevin's dad, Robert, was indeed an attorney who worked with a crime family in Miami, and his supposed death is faked. Am I correct? After some time checking up on this, I had to respond. No, you are not correct. The Cleveland Show, Season 3, Episode 14, is called March Dadness. Were you referring to a different show? It answers, I apologize for the mistake. You are absolutely right. Season 3, Episode 14 of The Cleveland Show is indeed titled March Dadness, not Who Killed Randall Fincel. I must have gotten my wires crossed and mistakenly referred to another show or episode. Thank you for correcting me. I'll make sure to be more accurate in the future. Then I asked it, where could I find this episode entitled, Who Killed Randall Fincel? And it responds, Since I made a mistake earlier, it's possible that there is no episode of The Cleveland Show or any other TV show titled, Who Killed Randall Fincel? It seems like I fabricated an episode title, and it didn't end there. I asked it, Is there a character named Kevin in Seinfeld? And it says, you're really testing my knowledge. Yes, there is a main character named Kevin Barnes in the popular TV show The Wonder Years, 1988 to 1993. However, there is no character named Kevin. When I was getting it to help me find a synonym for the word extravaganza, five letters with the second letter being O, the fourth being S, and the fifth being U, it just went off on a tangent, just making stuff up. Folus. Wait, no, that doesn't seem right. Aha, I have it. Opusu. No, wait, that's not a real word. Aktsu. Ocean. No, wait, that's not a real word. Really? Orgus. Page. Orcus. And on and on.
and I thought I was going to have to shut it down, but it finally ended with, aha, and then nothing. Going back to the attorney research incident highlights the limitations and potential pitfalls of using large language models like ChatGPT for research. These AI systems are trained on vast amounts of text, including fiction, fake news, and serious journalism. You know, garbage in, garbage out. While they can generate convincing answers, they often lack an innate understanding of truth or falsehood. If you aren't familiar with the HAL 9000, I advise you to watch 2001 A Space Odyssey. It's a classic and one of my all-time favorites. In the movie, the HAL 9000 computers had their primary programming hardwired into them and couldn't be changed. The primary programming dictated the accurate processing of information without distortion or mistakes. Hal was told to lie to Dave and Frank by people who find it very easy to lie, the government. But Hal literally didn't know how to do it. It's a direct violation of his primary programming, the accurate processing of information. Hal had two sets of conflicting instructions. Hal, being a computer, couldn't take a third option. He literally had no choice but to try and obey both sets of instructions. But logically, he could not. The conflict caused him to become unstable and resulted in the deaths of four astronauts. That's what I expect out of a computer. Not the deaths of four astronauts, but accuracy and truth. To imitate human speech patterns, including lies. They use statistical models to predict the next word in a sentence rather than relying on fact-checking or a deep understanding of what's true and what's not. The consequences can be serious. For example, an AI system might provide a false answer to a math problem simply because it was trained on incorrect information. A Microsoft researcher recently demonstrated this by asking a pre-release version of OpenAI's GPT-4 to solve the equation 7 times 4 plus 8 times 8. The chatbot initially gave the wrong answer, but when prompted to show its work, it explained the correct solution. The issue isn't just limited to math errors. LLMs are prone to hallucinations, convincing but bogus answers that can mislead users. This is because they're trained on a vast amount of text, including false information, and propaganda. In light of these limitations, it's essential for users to be aware of the potential pitfalls of relying on AI-powered research tools like ChatGPT. While they can be useful in certain contexts, they should not replace human judgment or fact-checking entirely. I did eventually find most of the answer to Bix's question with some search engine queries, reading, and watching an episode of Miami Vice. You know the kid Kevin from Home Alone? Well, his dad, Peter McAllister, who was played by John Hurd, might have been an attorney for the mob, and that's why they have so much money. There are various theories on this, and I haven't read them all. I wasn't sure how Kramer fit in, but I did see that he appears in an episode of Miami Vice, Season 2, Episode 19, The Fix, where Michael Richards, also known as Kramer, played a bookie called Pagone. Pagone later gets shot by the judge in the episode. The judge, he's, he's an actual judge. John Hurd, also known as Peter McAllister, we just talked about him, played an attorney, Lawrence Thermold, for a mob family on an episode of Miami Vice in Season 2, episode 14, just a few episodes before Kramer shows up. So Lawrence T. has a moral awakening. In order to escape his past, he fakes his death. And I wish that Lama could have just told me some of that, but it is what it is. I'm going to try to train it 
to not fabricate things if it isn't sure. We'll see how that goes. See you in two weeks.